Praise God. I believe that this church is destined to be a blessing to the area in which God has set us. And I believe that things are going to happen. It might take a little bit of time, but in God's time, things will happen that will make a shake us and the neighbors in which we are, neighborhood in which we are living in. Lately, we have been hearing a lot about being a child of God. And I believe that this morning it stuck into my heart quite a bit. And I believe that this morning I want to deal just a little bit about I am a child of God. Jeremiah was a mighty prophet. He, we know him as the man who God used mightily. But in the beginning of his ministry, when God called him, he began to say, Lord, I can't really do much because I'm only a child. And therefore, the word child here is intended to be, I am simple. I am not very much educated. I do not have the ability in order to do what you want me to do. Now, that makes me and you together in the same level. We feel that we are not capable or not good enough to be able to accomplish what God wants us to do. But here is what God says to him. He said, don't say that you are a child, for I shall, uh, I shall go to them. Um, for you shall go to all the people that I will send you, and you will say the thing that I will tell you to say. That means that if we are children of God, it means that God has a duty upon our life in order to empower us to say what He wants us to say and to go where He wants us to go. Sometimes you feel you're not doing much, Sometimes you feel like you're not saying much, but remember, you are only doing and saying what God is trying to tell you. Therefore, we are valuable into the service of God for whatever place that we might do. The next scripture that came into my mind is the one of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, which Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I do all the childish things. But when I became a man, I have left the childish things, and I began to do the things that only men do. Therefore, here we see two sections. One is God calling, God infilling, God giving the ministry, God giving the purpose, and second, there is man attitude in respect to what God wants us to do. I, uh, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. That means that I do not only depend in what God is going to tell me and when God is going to empower me, but I have to depend also to concentrate my life in order that I can grow spiritually, in order to hear the voice of God, in order to know the voice of God, in order to know what God wants me to do. And therefore, my growth and God-giving will come together and we are a powerhouse in the kingdom of God. Now I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I was born in the, in the kingdom of God. I was born in the kingdom of God. The circumstances of my life do not dictate what I am. I am a child of God, not because I am well 365 days of the year. I am a child of God, not because I receive everything that I want, but I am a child of God because He has made me His child by the power of the cross. Therefore, circumstances will not affect my position as far as God is concerned. What is your circumstance today? How do you feel? One day I feel like I'm so close to the Lord. Oh, I feel like I'm living in heaven. The following day, somehow, I feel like I'm living down to the valley. 
but those circumstances will not and must not affect who I really am. You remember the story of Paul and Silas in the Acts of the Apostles. They were taken, they were beaten, they were put in prison, they were chained in the bottom of the prison, uh, the prison, and there they were with pains and uh, with pains on their body because they had 39 stripes of the whip upon their uh, upon their back and therefore the pain was there but they were in they were in prison they were uh, 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 separated from all the people that they loved that they wanted to see there they were in the middle of the night and they were in pain and in sorrow but the bible tells us that they were singing and praising God, and as they were singing and praising God, because their position was not imposing upon them who they were, they were the children of God. Position does not affect what you are. It must not affect what you are. I remember, um, 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 I, I, come from a, I come from a family that they were all been in jail one time or another because of the persecution. And I remember that my mother, uh, when she came home after uh, 30 days in jail, she said that uh, the only thing they could do when they were in jail was to get together, uh, 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 quote a few scriptures, and then start singing songs and praising God and glorify the name of the Lord. One time they were making so much noise uh, Pentecostal people make a lot of noise. They were making so much noise that the uh, jailers came in and they began to uh, shouting at them because they were making too much noise and trying to uh, make them feel uh, inferior because they were in jail and reminding them that they were in jail. And one of the old lady from the church, and he said, we haven't done anything wrong. We are here because we serve God, and the God that we serve is here in jail with us, and he is blessing us, and we are praising him and glorifying his name. No, position and whatever I am or whatever I'm doing does not affect who I am. I can always open my mouth and praise God, and my spirit is in touch with the presence of the Holy Mighty of my Father. Happy Father's Day. I have an uncle who, um, God bless him quite a bit, and um, he was also taken to jail, and I think I told you the story before, his story before. He uh, suffered with asthma, so when he was in jail, the jail was a little bit damp. The asthma began to become very uh, affluent, and he couldn't breathe. He banged at the door, he asked for help, and they refused to give him any help because, after all, he was, uh, uh, he was in jail, and they do you lose a lot of privileges when you are in jail. So he lay down on his bed and he began to ask God to uh, help him. He said, Lord, if you want me home, uh, I'm ready to come. Just take care of my family that I left outside of the, uh, the, uh, at home and take care of my children. And Lord, I'm ready to come home now. So he lay down getting ready to go home. But somehow, the Lord didn't want him home yet. It was not time. So the angel of the Lord came, touched him. He was healed. He never had a problem with asthma anymore. He came out of jail, and he became the pastor of a church not too far away from the city of Rome. And he was going there every day. And so, you see, the circumstances that we are in do not affect what we are. God has a purpose in our life. And regardless of what, if we understand God's purpose in our life, we will be going and going and going, no matter if it's up to the mountain or down to the valley, we will be able to go. It is time today, it is time today for the church of God to rise up. It is time for the people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved by the power of God is to, be, get to, 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 to rise up, to, to stand up together 
and to be able to declare to the heavens and to the path to the world in which we are living in, to the past and to the present and to the future, and to declare even to the very power of hell that we are the children of God. And there is no way, there is no power in hell that can stop what we are because the gene that we have in our spirit is the spirit of the power of God and we have been refreshed by that power and nothing can uh, nothing can uh, uh, nothing can uh, oppose in what we are uh, in what we are we are the children of God we are one with him don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 20 also said, We have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, because both of them are of God. My body is of God. My spirit is of God. And therefore, my duty that I have is to glorify God in my body and in my spirit. Sometimes we like to glorify God in our spirit. We come to church and everybody seems to be okay. The songs are all right. The music is playing and the, and the musicians are doing a tremendous job. And we feel like raising our hands and praising God. But my friend, what about Monday? When I'm home, when the music is not there. When my brothers and sisters are not there, when I'm all by myself, the Bible said that even then and there, I must be able to glorify the name of the Lord. Why? Because I am a child of God. And if there is nothing else that I can do, I will glorify Him because I am a child of God. I have been bought at Calvary by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I am seated with Him in the heavenly places. That is the symbol of my birth at the cross, bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, he has given them the power to do what? To do what? To become the sons of God, even unto them that believe in his name. Do you believe in his name now? Therefore, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Now, that is uh, God's way of doing it. He does everything so that we can get into the place where we become the sons and the daughters of the Lord uh, of God. And therefore, he's done his part. Calvary is finished. His past is over. He's done. He's many years behind us. Now there must be some way that we can do in order to proclaim what we actually are. The symbol of my declaration that I am a son of, a son of God, I have declared it the day that I went into water baptism. A lot of people don't believe in water baptism. I don't know why. And a lot of them are Pentecostal too. They said, oh, well, well, I don't really have to do. I made my decision. Now I'm with God. The very little we realize that once we, have, we go into the symbol of the word of baptism, we are declaring to the power of darkness. That's what we are doing. We are declaring to the power of darkness what God has done. God has declared to the power of darkness and said, Joe is uh, my son. Therefore, hands off. But I haven't said anything, have I? So then my declaration, when I fall, when I go into water baptism, I am declaring to the power of darkness that I am a child of God. And I say, hands off, Satan or hell or whatever you want to call him, hands off because I am a child of God. Now the two have come together. There is God's position. There is my position. Now the thing is fulfilled and is done. I am a child of God. Because I am a child of God, I will prove it by walking in a new life. 1 John 4, uh, 5, 4. For whosoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. 
Now, it doesn't say what we do in a certain way or what when we are up, if we are the way we feel. He said, it is our faith. If I feel great, it is my faith that gets me in touch with God. If I don't feel great, it is still my faith that you get in touch with God. So if it is Sunday morning when I'm in church, it is my faith that makes me praise and glorify the name of the Lord. When it's Monday, I'm home and all by myself, and things don't seem to go well and seem to be dark and raining outside, I still can raise my hand because it is my faith. It is not what is around me, but it's my faith that makes me glorify the name of the Lord. It's not the position that I am in, but it is my faith that makes me glorify God because I am a child of God. And only then, and then, only then, I can glorify Him with the fullness of my strength because I am His child. Not little you can do, otherwise, you can stay home and do nothing. God is not going to do anything else. So then, first, it, this is my first declaration. My first declaration is the word of baptism in which I follow in, which I tell the power of hell that I am a child of God and there is no, no, no hands off me. I, they have no power over me. To be a child of God, it means something. It is not just going to church on Sunday morning. It means something. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus said these things. Blessed are the peacemaker. Very simple question. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called what? Huh? Huh? They shall be called what? So if I want to be a child of God, and I want to walk this life as a child of God, I have to do what? Be a peacemaker. I don't like when people start stirring trouble. I don't like when people are trying to do all kind of manufacturing things in order to get this over, uh, get over the barrel somehow, some way. The Bible said very clear, I am a child of God, and therefore, to be a child of God, I must be a peacemaker. I must walk this life in the way in which God wants me to walk it. I must do the thing that He wants me to do. And I must do the thing that He wants me to uh, be able to uh, do, uh, the, the thing that He had, uh, uh, wants me, the thing that He will be able to make me do, that glorify the name of the Lord. What is the first thing of a peacemaker? A peacemaker always glorify the name of the Lord. In whatever action, in whatever we say, in whatever we think, in all the things that we do or say, we are glorify the name of the Lord. Why? Because He's my Father, and I will not go against my own family, because I am family oriented, and therefore that family is there, and that family is part of me, and I am part of them. I will never, my father always said, you never talk against your family. Your brothers is your brothers, and your sisters are your sisters. I hate when I hear people talking against other people. I don't like when people talk about other Christians. I don't like when people talk about things that they should not talk about because they are the children of God as well as I am a child of God. And therefore, they are my brothers, they are my sisters. They might go to a different church. They might, be, they might choose to go to a different place. But my friends, they are my brothers and my sisters. When I go to heaven, they are going to sit next to me and next to you, regardless of what you think on what you want to do. And I believe in all my heart that when we go to heaven, God is going to make us sit right next to those that we have been talking about the most when we were here on earth. And we have all eternity to clear up the misunderstanding. You have the whole time in the world to be able to do so. Why? Because I am 
the pain. I am uh, a child of God. It's the church duty, at the intent of the church, to let the all principality and the power in the heavenly places might be known the manifold uh, wisdom of God. It is church duty to let the people know what God is doing in the power of God and the greatness of God. It is not to the people outside, but to the people inside to be able to, de to, to, be able to tell the world what God really is. How can anybody talk about God unless he's a child of God? How do you know about my family unless you have belonged to my own family? You don't know my brothers and my sister in the flesh because you never met them. You don't know them, but they are my brothers and my sisters. I know them. I'm part of them. We are going together. And my friend, I don't care which church you're going to, as long as Pentecostal, as long as filled with the power and the glory of God, they are my brothers, they are my sisters, and I have to speak well of them. Never speak evil. The manifold powers of God are given to the church to be able to let the church and declare that we are the children of God. Not just as myself that I have to declare, but it is the church that has to declare. In other words, I declare it in my own. But when we are coming together as a fellowship, as a family, you remember in the Old Testament that beautiful story of Joshua, who said, you do whatever you want to do. But as far as me and my house, you know what? We shall serve the Lord. You decide what you want to do. But as far as me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Which one is my house? Where is my house? These are my brothers and my sisters. This is my house. This is where I belong to. I don't, I don't worry about the next church, which is next door. They are up to them, whatever they do. This is my house, because this is where I eat. This is also where I sleep. You get some of those preachers and come and invited, and, and, and you know, you get some of those <coughs> very beautiful sleep. You can sleep as well. This is where I eat, because the Word of God is the food that feeds my soul. This is where I come. This is where I have. This is where I am fed day after day. This is when I feel discouraged and I have to talk to somebody. I go to my brother. I call him up. I say, I, I don't feel very good. Can you come? We'll have a little talk. And after my brother comes, we have a contact with candle quite a few times. And uh, we, when, when my brother comes, we have a little talk. He lifts you up. I lift him up. And we are going great praising God. And we, uh, when we leave, we feel better. Why? Because this is my family. Because this is my, is my family. We are the children of God. And therefore, as children of God, we must be able to love each other for the kingdom of God and the glory of God. We must tell everybody that we, the manifold and the glorious power in which the church does have. We want to see healing. My friends, start talking about healing. You want to see the power of God manifested in the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Start talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You want to see people getting saved? Start talking about the power of the power of the blood in salvation. And before you know, you will see those things happen. Because when we talk about it, when we think about it, we are run unison with the power of God. And before you know, those things are going to happen right within us. So therefore, I am living in a world in which is material and it's not very simple for me to live here. There is a lot of problem, a lot of troubles in which I have to face day after day. Therefore, as a child of God, I must learn to live in the Spirit. I must learn to live in the Spirit. In the living the spirit in a material world, I learn to live the will of God. I learn to live the will of God. It is not what I want.
but what you want. That's what Jesus taught us. It is not what I say, but what you say. It is not what I think, but what you think, Lord. Because this is what is, uh, this is, what is pleasing into the present and the glory of God. Don't we know that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Therefore, we have become one with the presence of God. The thing that I want you to remember, if you forget everything else, is to know that you are a child of God. A child of God is not just saying, I get up and I say, dear, yes, I am. There are things in which we have to do and things that we must do. There are things that we must do day after day as we live in this world. But I believe that it's important that we as a church, before we see a mighty revival by the power and the glory of God, that we realize who we are and what we are. We must realize what we are. If I don't know who I am, I don't, I don't stand a chance in this world. The thing is that it's very simple. When I was born, I was born into a family of Romans. Got nothing to do with you, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> and I was born into the family of Roma. I don't know why they were called Roma, but they were. I didn't have any choice. After I was born, my name was, uh, was uh, uh, set into, the, uh, uh, into the, uh, the books over there, whatever they do, whatever they call it. My name was there in the council, and uh, my father went there. He registered me, and he said, this is Giuseppe Roma, Joseph Roma. I had no choice. I couldn't tell my father, I don't like that name, give me another one. You know, I had no choice. He gave me the name that he wanted me to have. And the reason is very simple, in Italy it's very simple. I get the name of my grandfather. So that's it. I had no choice. I had to bear that name for the rest of my life. I'm 80. They mind your own business. I'm around 80 somewhere. <laughs> And, uh, and, and still, still, I bear the same name. He didn't leave me, he's still there. That's the way I am known. I didn't put it down there, he did. And sometimes when we come to the family of God and the things of God, we want to do the things that we want to do. We want God to use us in a way that we, he, we want to, not the way He wants to. We, we want to have our choice. I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like the other, my friend. If you are a child of God, you like everything God is giving you and you take it and you thank God for it and you grow in it and you praise God and you keep going because it's God given as I grew up my father and my mother took care of me because I couldn't take care of myself actually I don't really know I was one month old I think no I couldn't I couldn't no I I keep thinking that maybe when I was a couple months old uh, born, I was still taking care of myself, but I don't think I could have. Could I? Nah. I had to depend on my mother and my father. You know that? As a child of God, I depend on God. I depend on Him. It's what He wants, the way He wants me to do. Today is Father's Day. And we honor our fathers and grandfathers. But we also honor our Father which is in heaven. Most and foremost of all, we honor him. I believe that this is the time for the church to stand up. To get a little bit closer. Don't worry about it. Just get a little bit closer. And to stand together before the presence of God. And say, Lord... I am thankful that we are the children of God. Let us stand, shall we? Let us all stand. I want you to do something that probably, I don't think you have done it before, but if you have, it makes no difference. There is nothing new under the sun, you know that. Now, I am a child of God. 
I want you to tell yourself, I am a child of God. Tell yourself, I'm a child of God. Whoever is around you is also a child of God. Therefore, you don't worry about it. Would you please come more in the middle? We all sit far away down there. So it's so informal. It seems like we are, who knows what, far away. And I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I, I always sit on my seat over there. That's where, that's the seat that I got when I came to the church. <laughs> I've been here how many years? That's still the same seat. That's where God blesses me. And some people say, why don't you sit on the other side? Well, I don't know if God remembers that I'm over there. He knows that I'm over there. And uh, while I was living in Center Point, I always wear a hat, you know, the, the baseball hat with the glasses on top of it. And people said, why do you always wear a hat and a glass? I said, so people know who I am. <laughs> if I take my hat off, they won't recognize me anymore. And so that's what I am. I had a member of the church in, Mel in, uh, in New York that sat in the chair, and if, somebody, if he came and somebody else was sitting in the chair, he would ask him, please, would they get up? Because he, that was his chair. <laughs> My father sat here, I'm sitting here. And this is where God blesses me. If I don't sit there, God doesn't bless me. That's why I'm sitting on that side all the time. Maybe God is a... Right hand, you know. <laughs> I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God, and I want to see the all power which has been invested in me by the power of Calvary manifested because I am a child of God. We are the children of God. My friend, let us take this seriously. We are the children of God. And as we are standing together, let us together declare that we, the children of God, let the power of Calvary be manifested in our midst. Let the power of God be manifested in our soul, for we are the children of God. Do you feel like a child of God today? Raise your hand and praise him, because that's the way he wants you to do. Praise him and praise him and praise him and praise him. Praise him and praise him and praise him and praise him. Because we are the children of God. Oh, we are the children of God. And the power of the Holy Spirit is in our soul, in our heart. And we are glad today because we are. We are. I know that I am. Do you? I know that I am. Do you? Can you go home and say, I am a child of God. I can jump and jump and run because I am a child of God. I have nothing to fear because tomorrow is in the hands of my father. Yes. 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 My father wasn't rich, so he never gave me everything I wanted. Sometimes I wanted something, but he wouldn't give it to me. And that's okay. I didn't need it, really. The things that I really wanted were things that I didn't really need it. Like um, I wanted an ice cream. If I had it or didn't have it, it didn't make any difference anyway. You wanted a lolly. If you had it or you didn't have it, it didn't make any difference anyway. How many things that we want and God doesn't give it to us and we become sour in our spirit because God hasn't given it to us and say, Lord God, we have been asking and you have never given it to me. Did you ever realize that he, you are his child and he doesn't give it to you because you don't really need it. You don't really need it. But the good gifts in which he gives us are the gifts that we need. What do you want to do with your life? And that's what I want to close today. What do you want to do with your life? What is the intent of tomorrow for you to do for the kingdom of God? You might never do great things. You might never preach to 2,000 people. But you might be able to talk to somebody next door. My father was never a preacher. He was never a Christian 
teacher. He was never a pastor. But you will see him going down the street and talk to all those people that he met and tell them about the power of God. God. I serve God and he takes care of me. You can do the same thing. Don't expect to do great things all the time. Expect in the small one. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for our church right now. I ask, Lord, that you will give us an incentive that your name be glorified in our midst. Not only in our midst, but in the midst of the people that we are in touch day after day and week after week. Lord, we mighty revival, let it come upon our soul and upon our life. Revival is going to cost us, Lord, but we give us the strength to be able to pay for the cost in order that we might be able to satisfy your glory and your presence in our midst and that your name be glorified. Lord, we love you with all of our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.